Hi, this is Richard Rhodes, editor of Canadian Art, and today I'm with the Toronto artist Max Dean in his uh, Port of Toronto studio. And I have to admit, this is an uncommon um, uh, start for an interview like this because really what we're looking at, or what I've come to see today, is a work in progress um, that Max is tentatively calling Waiting. Max, what have you done here in the studio? Well, for the last year, I've um, actually learned how to become a photographer again in the digital age. And what I set out to do was to find a way to um, take a series of photographs, uh, which initially started to be based on the objects that I had around the studio. Obviously, you want to practice, and so I found many of the things that I've had here for many years, and I started... Uh, photographing them directly and um, they became part of a series called Objects uh, Waiting and they're really like the chair, things that we've all collected around us, things that we hold important. And then what I suddenly realized was that I wanted to interact with these objects and therefore I went and took the, the various objects of the index and started interacting with them in different ways. Sometimes I would interact with the one objects in a variety of different ways, and some of the objects in the index are, are, have been left alone to be there. So you've taken how many images in the end? Well, the suite itself is about 90 images finished. Uh, this represents, I mean, in, the, in its entirety, about 8,000 images that we took to get the, the 90 or so out of it. Okay, and in the studio, you've got them arrayed on three tiers on three gray walls uh, with a, a gray pattern painted on the floor. What's the pattern on the floor doing? So the pattern on the floor is actually you're in the photographic studio. So what we're seeing is the, the gray wall is the gray backdrop for the photographs. The gray floor is the gray floor that we see in the photographs in most cases like that. So what I've done is I needed to find a way of presenting or organizing all of these photographs, all 90 of them, in, a partic in, a, in various kinds of sequences because it's open-ended. And I wanted to be able to look at them all at once. And so what we've really ended up doing is creating a three-sided room where you can stand on the fourth wall and look at all of the, uh, in this case, 70 images as, the, as they start to speak to each other uh, in a variety of different ways. Now, um, I know after a little bit of looking, you start to figure out that there's a kind of definite storytelling going on with these images. You see the objects from what you call the indexes reappearing in the actions and then reappearing yet again in a third level of imagery. Um, what, what's the story? The story, really, quite simply, is more autobiographical, very loosely autobiographical, because when I started with the objects and learning how to take the, the photographs here is that they were all objects that I had collected, and I started to look at why I had collected them, for example, the chair image, because it relates to my robotic chair sculpture, you know, but there were other things, for example, broken cups that I collected, dusty shoes, a pile of newspapers, uh, things that I started to collect, and I, I, I began thinking about these and what my stake in these objects was, what I had invested in these objects, the importance that I'd given them, and how I would continue on or even pass on that level of custodian custodianship with the objects. So the photographs were one way of doing that, but there, they, it, there's a very loose kind of autobiographical strain which started to pronounce make itself evident which I started to actually build on in the later stages of the of the of the series there are a series of broken things in the images um, a dented car fender that looks the rust on it looks as if it could almost be blood stains uh, broken cups a uh, beautiful image of you fixing a broken cup with the word falls on it, which I assume references your Niagara Falls piece from a few years back. Uh, there's also an old suitcase um, and a beautiful photo of you holding an, uh, the suitcase with it open and closed, falling from it towards the floor. Yeah, I mean, this, there's the objects that I've inherited, like the suitcase, which belong to my mother. Uh, and there are the objects that I've collected, like the broken things are more or less the things that sometimes you've had, like, for example, the Niagara Falls Cup, and it breaks, and you are so invested in it, or like the falls, or what it represents, that you've kept it. 
And so in this particular photograph, I'm actually trying to fix the cup. I might say that it was a very unsuccessful fix, but I endeavored to fix it. In the case of the suitcase, it was something that I inherited from my mother that she'd had, you know, during the Second World War and reappeared throughout my childhood, so to speak, and is loaded with kinds of different kinds of um, symbols. For example, the monogram on the on the, um, the suitcase refers to my mother's first marriage. I'm the child of her second marriage. So, again, what I'm trying to do with some of the photographs is to um, recount the stories. Uh, that she told me about um, her life and the influences ha that had it. And the one that you're referring to is actually I'm swinging the suitcase around and all the clothes are flying out of the suitcase but I, because I actually did that in front of her at one time in a rage. So there's the, it's very loosely autobiographical. I think what I'm trying to do is really come to terms with my own life and the role that my mother took, you know, had in my life and the role that I gave her in my life. Again, the idea of waiting or objects waiting or in this case, people waiting or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's very loosely do doing with that. It's, it also uh, runs very parallel with my own work that I make references to m not only my own artwork, but also to other artists uh, who have influenced me in their work. So it's a, it's a very kind of loose narrative that I think that is, o I hope, open-ended enough that you, the viewer, can come to it and restructure it in any way that you would think um, appropriate. I'm not tied to any one story here. So the photos, in the end, are meant to be interactive. You can pick them up, move them along, move others aside, make your own stories. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. And I mean, it's very. I mean, it's very easy for me to say that, being you know, having a career as having made so many interactive works, and this particular kind of uh, installation of it, of being on picture rails on mats, allows the viewer to very um, easily do that and to tell the story and I'm sure there's a variety of different ways that we could present this but I somehow think that you know as viewers in the more conventional sense of framed wall works is that we do exactly the same thing anyways we ultimately take the objects and we invest the objects being the framed works and we invest them with something and we present them in a certain way so again the things here are just objects waiting to be interacted with so yeah there is an interactive component to it and I'd like to see other people take the various visual components of this and restructure it to make their own stories. Now the installation itself seems to be an object in waiting. Are there plans to show it publicly? Well there's no particular plan to show it in this particular profile. I mean I'm, I have to admit that uh, I made this so that I could actually structure the photographs so I could see what it was that I've been working on and I'm not someone that can work on a computer screen, screen and watch, see, see it sequentially one after the other. I, need to, I wanted to see the whole, um, well, the whole story, so to speak, at once. And that's why it's a three-sided rim rather than a four-sided rim. So you can actually take it all in at this point. So, but there's no specific plans to show this at the moment. So what's it like to spend a year in the studio remembering who you are? Well, I think probably I've been doing it, and I think we all do that all the time in all the choices that we make. I think it's been uh, incredibly challenging um, because the criteria that I um, imposed on myself was with the objects um, that the photograph had to be so good that I could give up the object. In other words, I wanted to invest the photograph with some kind of meaning or emotion that was profound to me and that and when I felt that I had got to that point in, with the photograph is that the, the, the object, which would probably never happen, would be redundant. But I think what I've tried to do is to say in the photographs, say, this is my feeling, this is how I interact with the object, this is the value that I place with that object. So in some cases, it's been incredibly challenging, right? And it's been a wonderful experience because um, as opposed to being driven by a task like making a chair that falls apart and puts itself back together, uh, this has been much more open-ended, so I've had to go and, uh, quote, fill in, the, fill in the story at certain points. And, and it hasn't all come in in a kind of logical order, and it, it's been fun. Max Dean, thank you.